the first uh, module we discussed about who the leader is and what is the role of a leader and then we discussed about the leadership. Leadership is a process and uh, then we discussed about the trait and behavior theories. And today in this lecture we will be discussing about contingency theories. So, while what is the difference between the trait and behavior theories and contingency theories, why we are moving towards the discussion on contingency theories. While trait and behavior theories help us understand leadership, an important component is missing that is the environment in which the leader behaves or the leader exhibits his leadership style. Contingency theory adds this additional information or aspect to our understanding of leaders effectiveness. So, mostly what we will be learning here is the Fiddler's model of leadership, Hershey and Blanchard's leadership th uh, theory and path goal theory of leadership. In more details let us understand contingency theories. The mm, uh, contingency theory or situational leadership theory. Contingency theory is a theory of leadership that prescribes which type of leader will be effective in a given situation. It takes into consideration the leader follower and the situation to determine the successful outcome or effectiveness of a leader in a particular situation. So, the theory does not require a leader to change his or her style based on the situation, but determines which situation is best for a particular leader given their personal style. So, which uh, is the most favorable condition for a leader? It stresses the importance of considering the context or the environment when examining leadership style. Whereas, if we compare it with the trait and behavior uh, theories of leadership, trait theory emphasizes on the specific traits of a leader and leader uh, behavior theory emphasizes the behavior that the leader exhibits with the follower or the interaction of the leader and subordinates and the behavior that leader exhibits in the interpersonal interaction. So, our discussion will be uh, restricted to Fiddler's contingency model, Hershey and Blanchard situational theory, path goal theory of leadership and various substitutes for leadership. Moving forward with the Fiddler's contingency theory, effective group performance depends on the proper match between the leader's style and the degree to which the situation gives control to the leader. So, here we will be discussing about the leader's style and the situation in which the leader is interacting with the or exhibiting the leadership style. We will also discuss about the least preferred co-worker questionnaire which determines whether individuals were primarily interested in good interpersonal relationship with co-workers and thus relationship oriented or they are productivity oriented or task oriented leader. Effective group performance depends on a match between the leadership style and the situation is the specific highlight of Fiddler's model of leadership. It assumes that leadership style whether it is based on orientation revealed in the LPC questionnaire, leadership style is fixed. Considers there are three situations, one is leader member relationship that is the degree of confidence and trust between the leader and the follower. The next one is task structure, the degree to which the structure of the task is structure in the job is well defined the structure task is structured, position power, leader's ability to hire, fire or reward a subordinate. So, for effective leadership the there must be a situation where the leadership style matches with the situation. For effective leadership must change to a leader who fits the situation or 
change the situational variables to fit according to the current leadership style. So, Fiddler's contingency situations are mostly the leader member relationship, the interaction or interpersonal relationship between the leader and the subordinate. How much is the leader having confidence with the subordinate, the degree of trust and the respect which members have towards their leader, it to a large extent decides the effectiveness of leadership. Task structure, degree to which jobs are structured, well defined and the tasks are allocated with a specific responsibility. So, that means the subordinates understand the nature of responsibilities being assigned to them. The third one is position power, degree to which leader has control over the power that is leader exercises power while hiring, firing or maintaining order or discipline and assigning say responsibility to individuals, promotions, deciding taking decisions regarding promotions, salary or performance appraisal. So, how much is the leader exercising the power bestowed to him based on the authority in the hierarchy? So, Fiddler assumed that an individual's leadership style is fixed and critical dimensions of leadership situation depends on position power, task structure, leader member relations. What is position power? It is the degree to which power of a position other than the personality or expertise, it is the power which enables an, a leader to get group members comply with the directions or the power which is given to an individual based on the authority structures of the organization, how much that helps the group members to comply or uh, the directions being given by the leader. So, power arising of organizational authority, a leader can give a clear instruction, a leader can exercise influence over subordinates. A leader with clear and considerable power position can obtain good followership. The next variable is task structure, the extent to which task can be clearly spelled out and people held responsible for them. If a task is clear, then quality of performance can be easily controlled and group members can be held responsible for performance. Third thing, third variable is leader member relations. How much is the relationship between leader and member congenial? Very important dimension for leaders point of view, since position power and task structure may be under the control of an enterprise or an organization. It has to do with the extent to which group members trust their leader and are willing to follow the leader or obey the leader. So, to measure the leadership style of a leader, whether task oriented or relationship oriented, Fiddler adopted a questionnaire or a testing technique which is called the LPC scale and he based his findings on the scores on the least preferred co-worker scale or LPC scale with ratings made by people in a group of members with whom they would least like to work. So, least preferred co-worker is a scale which has been developed with an intention to understand who is the most preferred or least preferred leader. This scale was circulated among the group of subordinates and the subordinates were asked to rate whether they would like to work with the leader or they would not like to work. It was measured on a Likert type scale with uh, uh, which would measure whether the person intends to work with the leader based on the behavior of the leader, based on say influence of the leader, based on interpersonal relationship. So, scores on assumed similarity between opposite scales, ASO scale 
which is uh, which are ratings based on the degree to which leaders see group members are similar to them or they are like themselves. It was based on assumption that people will like best and work with the best, those who are seen as the most similar to themselves or most like themselves. So, respondents answered on a 16 point scale for attributes of a person with whom they would like to work. So, these situations ranges from pleasant, rejecting or uh, comfortable and so on. So, findings of the uh, this situational leadership or uh, leadership style is people who rated co-workers very high had successful interpersonal relationship were seen as deriving maximum satisfaction from task performance. That means, if people liked to work with a leader because of the relationship or interpersonal relationship with them on several uh, measures or attributes. So, the effect the, the task was assumed to be highly effective. Conclusion of the Fiddler's situational model, Fiddler's contingency model is leadership performance depends on the organization than the leader's own attributes except perhaps on some unusual cases. We cannot say a leader is effective or ineffective, but only effectiveness in terms of situations. Effectiveness of a leader to a large extent depends on building an organizational environment. So, what we learnt here is that the trait theory emphasizes on the success of leadership based on specific traits of an individual the uh, physical traits, the psychological traits or the say some certain traits of an individual uh, whereas, the behavioral theory emphasizes on interpersonal relationship, how the leader has uh, an interaction with the followers and the situational theory emphasizes that effectiveness of leadership depends on the situation the environment. So, therefore, an organization should always try to create an environment or build an environment which is conducive for effective performance. So, graphical representation of Fiddler's contingency model if you uh, look at there are situations like leader member interaction, task structure and position power. And so, what we uh, learnt here is there can be 8 different situations. If you plot it on the basis of uh, relationship orientation on the one axis that is x axis and performance on uh, y axis and performance rating from poor to good and relationship orientation uh, that is favorable, moderate and unfavorable. There are 8 situations or 8 different situations where also we can see what is the relationship of leader and member, task structure and position power of an of a leader. Task and position power can be decided by the organization or we can say that an organization has control over these variables. Whereas, the leader member relations depend on the leader and how he interacts with the with the subordinates. So, it is just uh, it depends on the leader's behavior, leader's uh, style or uh, leaders uh, how they exhibit their leadership style. So, the first condition is when the leader member relationship is good and comparing in a situation where the task structure is high and position power is very strong. So, you can see that the leadership style is most favorable, it falls in the category of favorable leadership style. Leader member relationship is good and task structure is high and position power is weak, still it is favorable. Third category is when the leader member relationship is good and the task structure is low and the position power is strong. 
So, here also it is considered to be favorable. These, uh, these situations are used to determine which type of leader to use in a given situation. And uh, the fourth situation is where the position power is weak, task structure is low and re relationship is good. This category falls under the moderate category of performance. And uh, the four, fifth situation is leader member relationship is poor, the task is highly structured and the position power is strong. It also falls under moderate conditions. When the leader member relationship is poor, the task structure is high and the relationship is and the position power is weak, it also is, uh, is categorized under the moderate performance. Unfavorable situations are those where the leader member relationship is poor and the task structure is also not well defined or it is very poor and uh, the relation the position power is strong. So, which means that however, the position power may be strong if the task is not well defined and the leader and member relationship is poor, the performance will not be good or performance will be poor. So, which is an unfavorable situation and the last case is when the leader member relationship is poor, the task structure is low and the position power is very weak. So, here is an unfavorable situation where the performance will be very poor or very low. It implies that if the relationship of a leader and the follower is not good, so the performance can, the performance will be poor. So, people will not obey, people will not follow the leader or if there is lack of trust within the leader and the follower, so the performance is likely to decline. And uh, moving further, so assessment of Fiddler's models, uh, the positives is considerable evidence supports the model, especially the original eight situations are grouped into three situations. The first is favorable, first three are categorized as the favorable situations where the performance is likely to be good. The second three situation, the fourth, five and six situations is a moderate situation where the performance will be moderate and uh, the last uh, situation that is 7 and 8, the two situations are unfavorable where the leader member relationship is very weak or very poor. So, where the performance is likely to decline, performance will not be effective. When we assess the Fiddler's model, we get to know that considerable evidence supports the model especially if the original eight situations are grouped into three. The problem with this, uh, this model, Fiddler's model is the logic behind the LPC scale is not well understood, LPC scores are not stable and contingency variables are very complex and very hard to determine. Moving further, we will discuss about the Hershey and Blanchard's situational leadership style. Hershey Blanchard's model focuses on followers readiness, which means how much ready is the follower. And we will learn about the readiness of a follower based on followers can accept or reject the leader. How much is the follower ready to accept the leader? Effectiveness of the leadership style also depends on followers response to the leader's actions. Many a times leader is not accepted by the follower because of several reasons because of his their temperament, because of their knowledge, because of their interpersonal interaction. So, readiness is the extent to which people have the ability and willingness to accomplish a specific task assigned by the leader when they like the leader, when there is some kind of personal regards for the leader. So, uh, the readiness of scale defines how much is our a model that focuses on followers readiness. Followers can accept or reject a leader based on how much they are ready to obey the leader. Effectiveness depends on followers response to the leader's actions. Readiness is the extent to which people have the ability and willingness to accomplish a specific task. 
So, there are four stages. The first one is people are both unable and unwilling to take responsibility. They are not able as well as they are unwilling to take any initiative or responsibility. The second situation is people are unable, but they are willing to take necessary task or assignments. The third situation is people are able, but they are not willing to do what the leader wants. The fourth situation is people are both able and they are willing to do what task has been assigned to them by the leader. So, it is based on the parental model where the leader follower relationship is like that of a parent and a child as follower reaches higher levels of readiness, leader decreases control. This theory uses the same two leadership dimensions which the Fiddler's theory adopts that is task and relationship behavior. But Harsha Blanchard considers each as either very high or low and then combining into four leadership styles. The logic behind the parental model is as the child matures, the adult or the parent releases control and uh, releases the control over the situation. Similarly, when, when a uh, subordinate or a follower attains higher levels of maturity, the leader need not exercise control or leader should leave control. So, the leader should delegate more power to the, the subordinate. As the worker becomes more ready, which is otherwise can be, it can be con uh, construed as when the worker or the subordinate becomes ready to, ready for execution of task, the leader becomes more less is fair. Leader will only arrange some kind of interaction or interaction with external environment or leader will be uh, ready to provide information to the subordinate, but will not intervene in the task given to the subordinate. So, as intuitive model that does not give much support from the research findings. In Harshe Blanchard's situational leadership theory, a model that focuses on the followers readiness. The followers can accept or reject the leader. Effectiveness depends on followers response to the leader's actions. Readiness is the extent to which people have the ability and willingness to accomplish a specific task. So, if we categorize the Harshe Blanchard situational leadership based on uh, two axes. The first axis ability to follow, the second one is willingness to follow. If there are four situations where unable, where the follower is unable to uh, follow and at the same time unwilling to follow the leader's uh, directives. So, what should be the leadership behavior? Leader should give clear and specific directions. The second one is leader is uh, unable to perform and willing to take the uh, directions of the leader. So, the leader should display high task orientation, leader should give them assignments and focus on the goals or the task, the quality of the task, the rules and procedures being followed in the task, the focus should be on task orientation. The third situation is where the lead, the follower is able, but unwilling to follow. So, leader should uh, should adopt a leadership style which is supportive and participative. Leader should at the ta same time take suggestions and uh, say give a kind of direction. So, there should be a uh, amalgamation of supportive and participative leadership style. The fourth situation where the follower is able and willing to perform. So, leader does not have to think much and the leader can be a free reign leader does not have need to do much and they can uh, allow the, the follower to let go or perform. So, leader behavior on uh, should be based on the situations. In the first situation where unable and unwilling they are the followers are insecure, they are not able not efficient as well as they are not willing. So, there is a sense of insecurity 
and the leader's behavior should be telling, give them directions, give them instructions. There, the second situation where of uh, followers readiness, where they are unable and they are, but they are willing to perform, the leader should be a selling leader or leader should, leader should uh, display high task orientation, high task orientation or selling. The third situation where the leader is, uh, the followers are able and unwilling, they are apprehensive they have some kind of apprehension about their ability, about their, uh, their uh, performance. So, there the leader has to be participative leaders, supporting the subordinates in performance. Able and willing followers, when the followers are ready because of their ability and willingness. So, the leader should be delegating the task, they should delegate the task. So, what we discussed here is the behavior or the leader's behavior depends on four situations, when uh, how the followers are ready to take up assignment and their relationship with the leader. So, their Hershey Blanchard's leadership style or the situational leadership style emphasizes on telling, selling, delegating and participating leadership style. Telling is giving instructions when followers are unable, unwilling and not very confident. Selling is when the leaders explain decisions where the followers are unable, they are unable, unable but they are willing and their confidence, they are confident. Selling style is adopted when the followers are unable to perform, but they are willing and they are confident. Participative leadership style is adopted in a situation where leaders share their ideas, followers are able, but they are not confident, they are unwilling to perform. So, there can be the leader can give support, uh, support they can uh, help them, they can involve themselves in the in uh, decisions of or involve in the uh, in any activity being assigned to them, the responsibility or the task. Delegating style in is followed when the followers are able, they are willing and confident. The leader can be, uh, can completely delegate the task to the subordinates, because they are now able and they are also willing, they can take up responsibility, they are more confident. So, this uh, has analyzed the followers unable and unwilling, the leader needs to give clear and specific directions. When the follower is unable but willing, the leader needs to display high task orientation and high relationship orientation. They should uh, also adopt when the followers are able but unwilling, leaders need to use a supportive and participative leadership style. When the followers both are able and willing, leader adopts a laissez faire approach. Next, we will move towards the path goal theory of leadership in the next section. So, what we have discussed here, we discussed two broad categories of leadership style that is situational leadership style given by Fiddler and the second one is uh, proposed by Hershey and Blanchard. Thank you.